This is the experience we've all been looking for. It's not about the range, it's all about the charging, especially here in Germany when you don't have speed limits, especially at night, you can kind of just rip and then plugging in and charging up very quickly. Hello, good morning, and welcome back to another out of spec motoring road trip. It's just you and me today, and we have about 12 to 1400 kilometers to cover in the Porsche Taycan Sport Turismo. Now it's no secret, I love the Taycan. We've done a lot of road trips in them together, setting the cannonball record at the time from New York to Los Angeles. We've driven them all around Germany, driven them all around the US, and now it's time to go for another road trip the dog's excited. <laughs> I'm going to show you around the car we'll be driving. Sort of the reason why I'm doing another Taycan road trip, massive software update. I want to talk about some of the changes and figure out all the differences. And um, we're heading to the Tesla supercharger with the swimming pool so I can make a video on this station. Yes, I'm literally driving, I don't know, the equivalent of eight, 900 miles to go film a charging station. What has my life turned into? <laughs> but we'll have some fun along the way in the Taycan. This is the Porsche Taycan Turbo Sport Turismo, and that is the official name for this. This particular one is a late 2022 car, so it's a pretty much as fresh as it gets. Uh, I've actually driven this car a few weeks ago and put a few thousand kilometers on it. And now I'm back in Germany about to go on another trip again. And so, um, yeah, want to go film this charging station with the Tesla supercharger with the swimming pool. I actually came over to Europe to film the ID buzz, which no road trip coming on this channel, but take a look at our out of spec reviews channel for those videos. And, um, you know, I talked to Porsche and said, Hey, you know, I'm already back over in the continent. I know that this car was getting a big software update. Can I borrow it again and film a thing? So that's basically what we're doing. You join me in between Stuttgart and Munich and then go straight down south. It's an area called Lake Constance and um, yeah, beautiful little area down here. I'm actually a little bit north of Lake Constance near Ravensburg and um, yeah, perfect starting point. We have some nice roads, good views here in Southern Germany. Uh, have some friends that live down here and then heading up to uh, Hilden, which is north of Frankfurt, northwest. So going towards Cologne, Dusseldorf, I don't even know, but, you know, pretty far away northwest. So we have some high speed driving to do, although today it's probably filled with traffic. Maybe at nighttime it'll open up. Let's talk about a little bit of what the software updates have done. And uh, the software update that just launched pretty much brings all of the Taycans up to the same level. So if you have a 2020 car, 2021 or 2022 car, it brings everything to pretty much the same plane, the same starting point. And that's pretty exciting. Uh, mostly because of features that earlier cars did not receive. Now, because this one was built in 2022, its update was actually a smaller package than some of the older cars will receive. But if we talk about some of the older cars, we always talked about the rear motor disconnecting for efficiency and running front wheel drive. This car no longer does that. They've actually worked out with some tuning that they now drive on the rear axle and then pretty much try and shut off the front motor as much as they can. And again, it's a permanent magnet motor front and rear. So there are flex related losses, but they, they claim, Porsche claims that it's more efficient to do it this way than to actually disconnect the rear axle. That's fascinating to me. Something I've actually asked uh, some of my friends over at Porsche to do with me is to do a little run, a rear wheel drive versus all wheel drive, same wheels, same spec, little efficiency challenge. And I think we're going to run from Stuttgart to Leipzig and back, but this will be later on this year, maybe, or, or even next year. We're not totally sure when this will happen, but I think that'll make a great video in terms of spec on this exact car. Wow. 200 plus thousand euros, carbon ceramics, but with the black brake caliper. So you wouldn't even know stealth, stealth wealth, as we would say, <laughs> it's got night vision. It's got all the good stuff, but then no sunroof because performance. And so this is not a Turbo S, it is a Turbo, but still just an unbelievable machine. Uh, you know, it does a top speed of 270 kilometers per hour, which is about 165 miles per hour. I've actually made a whole video with this exact car sitting at top speed. It's spent a lot of time there. Um, yeah, just a really nice interior. It's got the full smooth leather, heated and cooled seats. It's got the screens in the back over here. And uh, yeah, we'll make specific videos about this car later on. But I think today what we're trying to do is go on a road trip. So 
let's plug in where we're going. I want to take a look at how fast route planning activates on this thing. I want to look at efficiencies at high speed and also low speed. The thing is, Germany has a lot of areas without speed limits, but there's a lot of traffic to keep in mind. So we have a lot to look into there. I've thrown my bags in the back. It's time to plug in Hilden and try out some charging infrastructure here in Germany. Really looking forward to this. It's been a solid year since I've done a, you know, sort of spicy road trip in a Taycan in Germany. And I think the charging infrastructure has improved massively. So Hilden Supercharger. Let's see if it comes up. Super CH. I'll just put it all in. Tesla Supercharger. There it was. Wait, I added more characters. Then it went away. Come back. There we go. And I hear this one has 40 plugins and restaurants and I'm going to make a whole video tour of this as well. Even the car knows it's a supercharger. It says we'd get there at minus 100% battery <laughs> and it says calculating charging plan. Now Tycon's always had one of the best route planners of any car in my opinion um, but uh, you know takes a while to load so I want to see on the new software if it loads any faster. The answer is mm, doesn't seem to be. Oh wait that was pretty good. That was pretty good. So it wants a 29 minute stop and then a six minute stop. Okay, let's just take a look. Charge planning and a mid minimum charge level at destination is at 3%, but you can set your arrival to the chargers at 3% because I believe, yeah, it's getting us there at 11%. This one is getting us there at 16%. We can optimize better than this. So. Uh, I just love that it knows it can get from 16 to 47% in six minutes. Just insane. One of the benefits of this new software on this car, besides some of the efficiency improvements, is actually the charging thermal strategy. And uh, I played around with it last night, and it seems pretty similar to Tycons I've been testing recently, but it's just insane that it can go from 0 to 50% in 10 minutes, 0 to 72% in 15 minutes. So from dead... A 15 minute stop gets you over 70% charge in this car, which is crazy. Now, driving in Germany, driving quickly at night, you burn that energy very fast. But we all know if you drive normally in Taycan, it goes much farther than what the EPA says. Now, this particular version, the Taycan Turbo Sport Turismo, is not available in America at all. We only get the Sport Turismo in one trim at the moment, which is the GTS. And it's actually the trim that I've ordered. So, I'll have a GTS at some point, but it's going to take a long time for this car to get built. Uh, the turbo, really nice, really spicy, and uh, definitely rips. I think the GTS will be a little bit more hardcore from a suspension standpoint. The turbo, to me, always feels like the perfect GT version of the car. Big top speed, big power, and definitely soft enough. And then the Turbo S is just crazy hardcore everywhere. So a lot of different adaptations and changes across the Taycan model line. And uh, in the US, at least, we only get one Sport Turismo variant. If you're not sure what the Sport Turismo is, there's the sedan, which we're all familiar with. And then there's two wagons, I call them wagons, two long roof options. The first is the Cross Turismo. That's the lifted one with the plastic wheel arches. Looks really good, really awesome. Sort of perfect for Colorado, actually. And then the Sport Turismo is that same approach, but lowered down and no plastic fenders along the side. And then just minor drivetrain tuning and, or I should say suspension and chassis tuning to associate with a more sporty character, I would say. Okay, that's at least what they tell me. So let's um, see, it's about 600 kilometers one way, but of course detours and other things we're gonna look at along the way. So uh, I'll just start driving and then the Taycan um, charging planner should adapt to my driving. If I drive really fast, it'll pull me in earlier. If I drive really efficiently, it'll push me to the next charging station. It's really good at that. And it also has plug-in charge and it factors in station availability. So this car has everything we need for road trips. It has awesome route planning, best in the business, I would say, right up there with Tesla. If a station gets full, it moves you to another one. So it's taking real-time station availability into account. 
uh, it's doing preconditioning on the way to the charger. And I've noticed that actually it adapts its preconditioning temperature based off of your route planner. If you need to do a deep charge, maybe it'll pull you in a little bit cooler so that you have more thermal mass, thermal longevity throughout the charging session if you need to do a deep charge. But if you're pulling in, you know, at high state of charge, for example, at 40, 50%, it gets the battery really warm. So you have less resistance up top to do a, a fast top charge. It's really smart. And then, it has plug in charge. We roll up to an Ionity station or a Porsche charging station, something like this, plug the thing in, does its communication and rocks and rolls and it's great. And I've shown this at the Audi charging hub video. I used this exact car with plug in charge there. So uh, we got 12,000 kilometers on this thing. Man, I've been driving it a lot. Let's, um, let's buckle up and hit the road. We got miles to do here in Southern Germany. Just to give you a map, I'll show you the exact route that we're going to take or at least the proposed route and uh, man, it's gonna be an awesome drive. So again, we're down here in Southern Germany. You can see we're actually right near Switzerland. So here's Italy, here's Austria, here's Switzerland. And uh, we're gonna go up to Ulm, over to Stuttgart, past Frankfurt, over to Dusseldorf basically, which is where this charger is. So um, yeah, plenty of options to charge. The nice thing about Germany is their high power charger is pretty much along every single route. You can see them just littered as they start to roll in here. So one of the routes I was thinking about taking was actually heading straight up here and over this way, which I think would actually be a little bit more fun, a little bit more mountainous, more twisty roads, less traffic, more de-restricted autobahns. Uh, I actually recently did that drive in a combustion car a couple of weeks ago and was just pegged the whole way at top speed. It was awesome. So yeah, we'll figure it out when we get up towards Ulm, but we have chargers no matter which direction we go. That's the nice thing about road tripping here. And uh, we'll get the cameras mounted and we'll head out. Quick stop to fill up just to wash the bugs off for the camera. Oh, there goes the wipers, shit. <laughs> well, I guess they'll clean them off for me. Good. <laughs> Been doing some top speed driving and the bugs really get coated on. Thank you very much, windshield wipers. It's a team effort. Pretty fast to respond, aren't they? Wham! Nope. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Sweet, let's head out.
And we have arrived at the Ionity charging station here somewhere. We're at 4% state of charge. The trip planner did an excellent job of choosing the farthest away charging station it could, which was this one. Once I told it, hey, the route I want to take is different what it, what, from what it originally wanted to do. It originally wanted to take us over to Stuttgart and then up this way. And I thought, okay, well, we'll just go up the middle. And actually Google Maps said this was faster anyway. Again, chargers everywhere, didn't matter. So once it recalculated, it hit here, but then we started running pretty fast with uh, some other cars, such as a Taycan GTS. I'll talk a little bit about the drive over in a second, but this was pretty much 95% to 4%. So we used 90% of the battery pack. And again, I drove pretty much as fast as I could given the conditions allowed. And so we should say since this morning. So we did 246 kilometers, two miles per kilowatt hour. Again, there's tons of traffic. So basically it's going wide open throttle, max speed. And then you just stopped for like, 30 minutes. It's crazy. So, you know, welcome to traffic. Anyway, let's get this thing juicing up. I had it preconditioning to the charging stop, a little bit of a different temperature strategy with the new software. You can see it hasn't warmed itself up that high. And that's mostly because we're going to be running, uh, you know, a pretty fast charging session for a long time here. So the car actually said, hey, I'm going to make sure I'm pretty cool by the time we get to this charging stop. And that should allow longer charging before overheat because one thing Tycon does do is overheat during fast charging sessions after an Autobron blast. So let's try plug and charge, make sure it works. I have it activated inside the car. It's like a couple menus deep. You just make sure it's on, I already did. I have not plug and charged this car on new software yet. So we'll take the handle here, we'll plug it in. It's like this was made for the Tycon, just this length and everything. <laughs> it's so perfect. So in we go. Plug and charge does take a little while. And a bee, oh no, I hate bees running away. <laughs> I really hate bees. And it says, please wait, communicating something, something. And now it says, authenticating, please wait, ID3 rolling up and all good, plug and charge work. So now it's just going to lock in with the car and get ready to go. One thing I think that could help with plug and charge times is to actually start the charging process as soon as it plugs in, but only give the car, you know, one, two or three kilowatts, something like that. And then let the uh, payment process go through. That way you can also, in addition to processing payment, get the charging all started and you won't get hit with a demand charge with fast charging. This is how that Sortimo fast charging park works. It gives you six kilowatts as soon as you plug in and then you have 30 minutes to figure out your payment, something like that. I don't even think you'd need that much at a station like this, but at that one, you have to go to a terminal. Here we are ramping up 4% state of charge, 50 kilowatts, 60. We should see about 340 amps is what I was seeing last night when I did a charging test. That's what the car was asking for. So yeah, it also is a little bit, nope, here we go. 332 amps. Yeah, that's right about where it wants to be. And then it hits 270 kilowatts when we come up and pack voltage a little bit. So man, just an awesome car. Wow, 340, yeah, what did I say, 340? Yeah, 345, that's pretty freaking sweet. So on the drive over here, it was really, again, just so busy with tons of traffic, but did have a couple blasts down the Autobahn. The first Let's think about this. We had a five series when we were first leaving that was moving pretty good, a five series wagon. Then we found an S63 AMG, you know, the big luxury sedan with um, the hot V. It's a four liter V8 in that one. And they were so evenly matched until about 200 kilometers per hour. And then the S class just pulled away every time traffic opened up. So that's just the thing with electric cars, of course, really good down low. And then as soon as we hit 200, that S class just started walking me. Um, but again, there was so much traffic. He couldn't actually stay that far ahead. And then I saw this guy in a Taycan GTS who was just bombing and we had a blast. And so this Taycan Sport Turismo and the uh, Taycan GTS sedan are very evenly matched. GTS has less power, of course, but the sedan shape is more aerodynamic and they were pretty much dead even and I barely would just walk them and I let them pass big waves, thumbs up all around. Nice to see some car culture here. Man, I've just made this clip. We're already at 17% state of charge. It's insane. We're doing 260 kilowatts. I'm going to run in and get a snack. I haven't eaten yet, so... I think we're going to charge up more than we need, but that's okay. That's the Taycan thing. It charges so fast. You don't have any time to do anything. So, um, but on this trip, 
we got to cover speed. So the more juice we have in the tank, the more we can burn when it's de-restricted. Cars that I passed on the way over here just recently are now rolling in. I went in to use the restroom, trying out a new chip flavor here. I think we have this in America, but the bag is different. And um, yeah, let's see what we're at. Literally just peed and grabbed the chips and we're already at 50% state of charge doing 254 kilowatts. You've got to be kidding me. Okay, as soon as it tapers off of max speed, we're, yep, right there, that's when it does it, that 50%, we're going to head out and head to the next station. So I'm going to just pack up the car and uh, yeah, 220 kilowatts, 230. Oh, I might hang out if it's going to hang out at 230. Yeah, absolutely. I say when it dips under 200 kilowatts, that's when we'll bounce. Yep, still doing 226 kilowatts at 53%, insane. Temperature's definitely getting up there. It was smart that the car didn't warm itself up that much for this charging session. It allowed it to just shred through. I wish I was watching it, but literally plugged in, made a quick clip, peed, and we're already ready to go. Um, I've then now just put the car in Sport Plus, which gives it even more aggressive cooling targets than the regular DC fast charging profile. At least that was the case on the older software. And I think it is now actually, because I can hear the fans really juicing up right now. So that's the trick with Tycom. When it gets toasty, Sport Plus, that's at least what works for me. Down to 206 kilowatts. So I'm guessing this is probably the internal charge maximum for this state of charge. Let's put in the supercharger where we're trying to go, this Hilden one, and see what it thinks about getting there from here. Man, the fans are going crazy. 53 degrees Celsius, not even turtle mode. Interesting, previously on older software, no matter what, it would go into turtle mode after a hard Autobahn blast. And it did a great job keeping itself cool, I would say. So it's going to take us on this route. I actually turned off the charge manager because it didn't think we would make it to this Ionity station. And well, guess what, we did. So we'll put the charging planner back on and let it uh, calculate our route you can just see all the construction zones the whole way. It's just insane how much construction they're doing here. Germany, good luck. Okay, so this is where it wants to go if we were to leave right now. Let's see. It says plus 13 minute charge at 16% at that Ionity station, which is here. So we could probably leave now, drive fast, and make it there and use up the extra. So I say let's do that. Let's just put this as our main destination. Okay, and I'll do that by going here and saying discard charge planning. How do I just say I wanna to go to this one? Huh, I know I can just cancel the route, but then I'm gonna forget where it was. Okay, it's over here, north between Aschaffenburg which I was just there recently, actually. We had dinner, Jordan and I had dinner in that town. Boom, so go there, this one. Ionity, great, north, that's the way we wanna go. And we'll say, start route guidance, 19% arrival. Let's take a look at our charging, 178 kilowatts. Let's go, we'll get more there. I got 20% extra to burn along the way. Hell yeah, this is the way to road trip Tycon. This is awesome, the fans are going crazy. Um, we've been here 14 minutes and we're at very high charge and we have so much extra to burn along the way. And Ionides are typically right off the highway. Come on, unlatch yourself. Let's go. Type two Euro charging is so, takes forever to unlatch from the car. I'm just gently pulling on it. I'm not pulling that hard, waiting for the, the pin to unlock. There we go. In you go. Thank you very much. Do we get like a little situation as to our results? Nope, no receipt. Oh my God, hear the fans on this thing, crazy. All right, car's on, into gear. See you at the next charging stop. from Tycon because look at this we just pulled on the highway and I'm still getting full power 
typically in Tycon, I don't get this kind of full power right after a charging station. It usually thermal throttles. So definite software improvements. Hard on the brakes for the speed limit right here. And the ceramics are working well. In Germany, I would just get the ceramic brakes because you're not really heating them up that hard for track use, but you are pounding on them from time to time. And ceramics don't warp like normal discs. And we'll set the inno drive with lane centering on as normal which is really a, a very good system here, I have to say. Maybe I'll make a whole video on Inno Drive. Temperatures didn't go past the red. The new software is making a difference. It really is. This is impressive. hardcore turtle mode right now <laughs> temperatures through the roof i was right driving with excuse me that very nice gt3 rs up there and we were just knifing through traffic legally and safely and uh yep overheated the car and now it's just coming back alive a little bit see that my foot's just welded to the floor the turtle's on the dash yep and i've been running sport plus this entire time to try and give it cool down periods. I have climate control off to divert all the cooling to the uh, high voltage battery pack, but that's all we'll get right there. It, it does recover quite quickly actually. So just being easy on it. And then, uh, yeah, we're only very close to our charging station. So yep, we'll just nurse it on into the charger. I think charging is going to be pretty bad because we got everything real toasty right now. Our exit, I'm still at wide open throttle. I'm kind of curious what the worst case scenario is to pull in, you know, sort of everything overheated. So I'm still floored and now we're going regen. Even regen has a limit, but it's recovering quite quickly there actually. So let's go plug this thing into a charging station. We just came out of turtle mode actually and see how fast it charges. Again, everything is red, red hot down to 53 C. Wow, it's cooled itself pretty well. I think the charging stations are typically on the other side of the fueling pumps. So yeah, pretty good acceleration here. Let's see if we have a good or bad charging session based off of this. Again, Sport Plus, climate control off, best way for thermal management. The fans are screaming on this thing. There's the charging station, Ionic 5 and an e-tron. Nice thing about these Ionity stations is they're all 350 kilowatts, so we'll get maximum juice, or at least the charger should not be the limitation on the way over there. So let's just get this thing over to the charger as quickly as possible, so it has the least amount of cool down time, sort of simulating pulling off the racetrack or the Autobahn and getting it right into the charger as quickly as possible. So zooming on in and pull up pretty far. All right, let's grab the handle. Let's plug her in. Fans are going. They're starting to slow down a little bit now. I still have the car on in Sport Plus unless it shut itself off. Nope, still on in Sport Plus. We'll let it do its plug and charge communication. And uh, yep, see how this thing goes. <laughs> I don't know if you can even hear me over the fans on this thing. Let's just take a look at our trip over here. It was a short trip. We're down to 10%. So it was 101 kilometers, 1.5 miles per kilowatt hour is not bad considering the high speeds. But again, it was dense traffic. It was like traffic, traffic opens up what? to max speed with that GT3 RS. And then we were down. It was so much fun ripping with that GT3 RS until we went into overheat. That thing 
and this were pretty much dead even on acceleration. Again, that's a downforce car. You buy a Turbo S if you want to go fast 911. Here we are charging. 135 kilowatts just kicked on and the charger is delivering 240. I'm looking at it right over there. And this is taking a second to ramp up. There we go, 236 kilowatts. What I'm gonna do, and it's actually in turtle mode now, what I'm gonna do is actually shut the car off and let it go to its normal DC fast charging profile. And I'm just gonna take a look, monitor the charging over there. 250 kilowatts going in, even though we were just in turtle mode. This car is crazy. Yep, and the thing is just pegged at max. I'll let you know if it tapers early, but it actually even shut off the fans. <laughs> Well, we finally hit our thermal limit. You can see at 40%, we're down to 157 kilowatts. Let's take a look at the temperature that it's actually limiting us at. This would be sort of the maximum allowable temperature of the battery pack. So let's kick this on. Yep, turtle mode's on. So 57 is pretty much max hot. If we're gonna have the thing on, I'm gonna go into Sport Plus. And yep, 154 kilowatts. We know it can still do 265, 270, but it rocketed the whole way, I swear right until this maximum point. So I'll keep Sport Plus on, cabin cooling off. Just spoke to the Ionic 5 owner. Over here, he loves his car, 240 kilowatts. He's doing a full charge, first time, just to zap it up. And the difference here, we're thermal limiting at 157 kilowatts, but the mighty E-Up only doing 37 kilowatts. If you're curious about E-Up content, my friend Tom actually started a channel. He lives in the Netherlands, all about the E-Up. It's the same car I took around the Nürburgring and uh, highly recommend checking out his channel. I'll leave it linked in the, in the description. I think it's called Super 69 Racing. Great name, really awesome guy, huge EV and car enthusiast, but 37 kilowatts, and we're complaining about 157, just to put it in context. So even with the thermal throttling, it's found a really good profile here just to hold it at 157 kilowatts. It hasn't really moved at all. You can see our range isn't much. See you later, nice to meet you. And um, yep, basically it's just keeping itself right at the maximum temperature and getting us the most amount of juice. I've put in our route plan here to figure out what's the best way to go to where we wanna go. And I was thinking we would find, you know, it doesn't, I guess it's not accounting for the fact that we're kind of already charging. Um, it wouldn't be a bad idea to charge up pretty high to let everything cool down because as it goes up in the state of charge, it's, um, you know, it's going to cool itself down as it naturally has to derate. So let's see if we can just, how many kilometers is it to just get there? 274? Mm, I don't think we can quite do that unless we're going slow, which we're in Germany. We can't go slow. Let's see what this is here. Ian Bive, Autobahn. Let's take a look. West, 300 kilowatts. Let's put that as our destination for now. Just a, a bullet point. It says we'll need another 15% to get there, 14%. I'm just gonna turn the charge planning off since I'm doing it manually right now. And I kind of want to know how long it takes to get there. And there goes the Ionic 5. Nice car. That guy was so into his car. Also a viewer, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. The E-Up, still at 32%, doing 37 kilowatts. And uh, yeah, so we need another 15%. So we'll charge here to, let's just say 80% to give us some buffer. It should hopefully cool down as we get a little bit higher in the state of charge, as the fans keep rocking. And um, yeah, that, that'll be our stat, 166 kilometers. We could easily do if we're hammering with a high state of charge. I am not sure what the Taycan is doing, but it is freaking out. It's going 130, 160, 130, 160. And this is definitely giving a more accurate reading than the in-car, you can see it's freaking out. It might have something to do with the cooling system, but I don't know, it's really just rocking all over the place. And then it wants to do 150, but I think it's just like temperature limits. We keep bumping into them. I'm sure there's a couple different protections we're running into from temperature, and that's what's causing all this. Still just at 57. And uh, the in-car definitely smooths out a lot of the charger. I don't know if you can see this, but the charger's rocking all over the place. It was just down to 130 but this is just showing more consistently. So this has more smoothing on it than the actual uh, charger does, which shows instant kilowatt uh, reading. So that shows 160, 159. This is showing 154. I believe this is what's going into the battery pack. That's what's being delivered to the car. Of course, with the fans running this hard, there's some losses. Again, Sport Plus, everything. 
and we still need another 1% to make it there if we kind of drive, you know, how we have been driving. But yeah, I'm gonna let this thing charge up to 80%. We'll give ourselves 10 more percent and uh, at least, and then hit the road and I can just drive easily to let everything cool down. Well, we have reached 79% state of charge. Typically, this is when we fall off a ledge. It should go to about 80 kilowatts here momentarily. And then from there, about 60. It's still toasty. I did not expect it. I guess we cooled down one degree. So that's to be expected now that we're doing a little bit less power. Um, shows a 9% arrival to that charging station that we selected. So man, this thing has just been spanked today, hasn't it? Really been driven hard, but that's what a Porsche is meant to do. And honestly, it's not complaining. It's got safeties and measures. Wow, I've never actually seen, there we go. There's the drop, okay. Um, and sometimes there's a little bit of BMS sway. So sometimes it happens at 78 or 79%. But now that we're only doing 56, 57 kilowatts, uh, 60s, okay, whatever. Now it should cool itself down. And once it comes out of turtle mode here is when I'll hit the road. Oh, also the mighty E-Up has throttled. Don't know if it's due to temperature or charge curve, but it's down to a mighty 26 kilowatts. By the way, the E-Up is one of my favorite all-time cars. I really love it. Really love the E-Up. If it was available in the US, I would totally drive one. Yep, yeah, 25 kilowatts at 50% on the E-Up. This thing, Barely not cooling down much, even with the fans going. And at 84%, we're down to 53 degrees Celsius average temperature. Again, when I'm referencing battery temperature, it's the average of the system, whatever it's displaying. It doesn't actually break it down into the cell groups. I should try and figure out a way to get all the CAN data out of this so I can really do some nerd stuff, nerd level 9,000. But I think we're gonna unplug. We're only doing 44 kilowatts at 84%. We have 15% arrival. I'm gonna probably drive it a little bit easy just to let everything cool down and then uh then we'll hit the road so stop charging boom <laughs> charging is is the quickest way to heat up a battery pack i think a lot of our limitations out on the road when we were coming in with that gt3 really ripping it um i think it's a lot of it's inverter or uh, motors themselves rather than the battery pack although i will say the tycon has got some pretty interesting designed to let everything kind of come up to temperature together. A, it's got a great cooling loop that cools everything, but also the thermal longevity of the units are all designed to bring everything up in unison to distribute the thermal load across the entire system. So I'm really impressed with this car. Again, it's not more, not cold out today. It's toasty out today. There's no wind. This car's just sitting here baking and we still had an insane charging session. About 30, 35 minutes or so to get from 10 to 80% with the thing and we're at 85 percent it, it took a while at the end with the thing just in the red so i just don't think you could get a better car adapted for germany than this i'd really love to run my plaid alongside this here in germany we need to do this as soon as possible because that's the only car that i think could a keep up with this thing at high speed probably faster and b from a charging perspective i don't know i still think even with the temperature limits the tycon may have it that's just based off of my experience with my own model s but I'd love to get one here and do a real world test. Interior cooling disabled in Sport Plus is the message you get when you put on climate control in Sport Plus. It's saying, hey, sorry, dude, you're in Sport Plus. This is racetrack mode. I'm giving everything to the battery pack. Now, of course, I could take it out of Sport Plus and it would give me fresh ice cold air right here through the vents. Really nice that the user has so much control over the car.
we have arrived. There's a purple wrapped EQC i3S Q4 e-tron looking good. We passed two Skoda Enyaqs leaving. And so lucky we got here just kind of at the perfect timing. So this is stopover one. We were planning on going to the ENB Bay, but um, the, actually we were so efficient on this run. You can see the temperatures are looking great that uh, there just wasn't much opportunity to drive too quickly. 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour, a couple wide open stuff, but not too bad. 200 kilometers on that leg. Everything is cooled down. I ran Sport Plus the whole way. Let's shut it off. See if we can plug and charge on these units. These are the prettiest ones, I think. So let's get juicing up here. Nice. Man, this EQC looks kind of cool in purple with the gold wheels. Oh, and there's an original Ionic as well. Nice. Let me get it plugged in. And so you can see here, it says communicating. That's good. Table cooling's on. I can feel the unit shaking. High power charger, 350 kilowatts. Who makes these? Tritium, interesting. Nice. And those are the cabinets over there, I guess. So let's see what kind of juice. It says plug in charge, auto connect. It just did that. Wow. Using Ionity on this trip, the Porsche is doing a great job at selecting the charging stations. Again, I had planned to go to that ENB Bay, but again, we could not rip it that hard. So it just said, you know, when I put in the supercharger where we're trying to go film this video, it said, you know, just, just rock and roll, go on past that one and head over here to the Ionity station. Really a nice looking spot, have to say. Not a huge fan of this area of Germany. It's just so industrial and busy and people are angry typically. And here we go, wrapping up 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Come on, baby, let's keep it going. They could do more than that. Come on. 160, that's all you got? Is that because we're sharing with someone? I don't know. Maybe it's not 350 kilowatts per post when you have a full site like this. There's only one available open spot. Anyway, we'll take 160 over nothing. Looks like, yeah, that's all we can get right now, 160-ish kilowatts or so. It must just be because we're at a full station and we're sharing with something. That's really the only explanation. Temperatures are good. Everything is good. This little bar is all the Porsche thinks we need to get to the supercharging station where I can film the video. I already checked that the Hilden supercharger is huge. 40 stalls, I think. 35 are open, and they are open to non-Tesla EVs. And I've already made sure the Taycan works and my app works to activate them. So I think we'll head there pretty low and plan to charge up while I film that video. We won't get more than about 150 kilowatts at the supercharger, um, but that's okay. I'm going to need some time to film and explore around there. So the guy in the Q4 just unplugged and boom, right up to 246 kilowatts. So that was our answer right there. He and I were splitting power and now absolutely rocketing along as expected. So that's awesome. Just spoke with a gentleman in the Q4. He came over to ask how fast I was charging and he, he had known that they were paired and he's a huge EV enthusiast, another viewer. Always fun to run into viewers around and uh, he loves his Q4. He says it's a little bit slower charging than the Taycan, of course, but it's actually perfect for him. He's got the big battery, uh, so 77 kilowatt hour battery. There's an awesome Bernese Mountain Dog behind me over here. So cute. And um, yeah, just, just juicing up and uh, only need about five minutes now that we're at uh, high speed. So it won't be long, we'll be back on the road. So the car thinks we can get there with 7%. It's only about one hour. There's gonna be quite a bit of traffic, I think. And um, yep, this is it doing its route planning. So it doesn't actually give you the charging speed. There we go, during route planning, but 260 kilowatts. If I touch it, does it bring it up? Nope. So it's gotta think about route plan and all this stuff which doesn't give you charging speed. Anyway, um, not too disappointed considering the speeds of everything here. This car really is the only EV that would work for me in Germany, which is just crazy high charging power and relatively efficient at high speed. Efficiency doesn't matter because there's chargers everywhere. It's just how fast can you recharge? And this car wins on all cars for sale in Germany at the moment. So we've been here for eight minutes. The car again, 340, 341 amps. 263 kilowatts, let's stop charging. <laughs> Man, Tycon is crazy. Everyone's still here from when we got here. Stopping charging, hitting this. Come on, let it go. We'll be back on the road, over to the supercharger. See you along the way. Thank you. Man, some chunky cable management on these things, aren't they? And locked and loaded. Automatic charge port door closes it. Off we go.
have arrived over here at what is one of the most incredible charging places I've ever been to. 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour. We have a whole bunch of FastNed Alpitronic 300 kilowatt units. There's a million level twos all around. And then of course, just a massive Tesla supercharger install all throughout. So have to do a little bit of exploring, pulled the Taycan up, didn't scrape. That's surprising. I listened, no noise. And uh, yeah, we got to go look around this place. This is incredible. Solar on the roof. Bad news, the supercharging pool has been dismantled and taken away. So not sure what's going on with that, but got to do a whole video tour of this place. Going to do ex some exploring and this video will be going live literally right after I film it. I'm this is a film edit and upload and the exact same time, sort of a rush upload situation. Tycon's looking good for sure. And uh, yeah, we got we got to hammer out this video. So catch up with you after we're done filming. I'm just plugging the Tycon in over at the FastNed station because I just got a plug surfing account thanks to some of my friends here in Germany. You're not able to do this as a foreign but I put my credit card on it and using their app. What I'm actually gonna do because I'm not in a huge rush is to put on battery saving fast charging, which will um, reduce the charge rate to maximum 200 kilowatts and a maximum temperature rating. So whichever happens first, and this will help A, reduce the load on the grid and also help save the Taycan. Uh, obviously we just thrashed it in the red, right? And it's not my car, but Hey, why, uh, why hurt it if I need some longer charging? It's a great option. And it, it really doesn't make too much of a difference on charging time, maybe an extra 10 or 15 minutes, but really depends on temperature. But that's fine with me. This thing will be fully charged before I'm done filming. Guys, take a look at this charging station. Just insane. There's 56 level two charging points all around. The Tycon's actually at 95% state of charge right now. I just finished filming the out of spec reviews video. There's 40 Tesla superchargers. They have superchargers for trucks and trailers over here for pull throughs, which is awesome. And uh, it's really gotta be one of the most insane charging locations. Two megawatt hours of battery storage on the backside, 710 kilowatts of solar peak. These are massive, massive of numbers over here. This seed and greet restaurant here is going fully vertical farming uh, and building a full building right over here where the whole center backbone of it is five stories of vertical farms and then office space on either side. It's going to be really incredible. And they were just so nice in there. I met the guy who drives the Kia e-Nero and he was just one of the coolest guys, super passionate about e-mobility, loved everything. And so, yep, the Taycan here, just going to get editing, get this video posted, and then we'll hit the road and figure out our plan from there. But uh, yep, this was pretty incredible. Well, no question, this was one of the quickest turnarounds on a video I've ever done. Filmed, edited, and uploaded. We are ready to go, just waiting for this to process yeah, guys, in HD. So this would have already been live by the time this video goes up, of course, but we still just have basic quality. So as soon as it processes in HD, set it live, P, and hit the road back down south. All right, so hour and a half from the moment we arrived, just about now, the car is full, I'm full, just ate. The video is already uploaded and live on out of spec reviews. That's what I call full efficiency, folks. All right, let's hop back in the car, turn around. We'll see if we can make it all the way back. Can always stop at a hotel if I get tired, but I'm still on US time. Also, nighttime means less traffic, which means higher speeds, which means more testing so i say we just rip it well we're all loaded up we're charged literally loaded up that's how the germans would say it loaded means charged but 341 kilometers projected range not bad considering the rippage we've been doing let's put back in where we want to go and take a look at the charging plan and then just push it all the way to the uh the farthest we can go wow really not bad it says 2 30 a.m if we did no charging, again, minus 100%, which is what we saw on the way up here, of course. Um, yeah, six hours, it's 8 p.m. I mean, I'm on American time, so that puts me there, you know, early evening-ish. Really not bad, but, you know, we'll see. If I get tired, then uh, I'll just stop at a hotel or something like that. So it's got to do all of its charging plan stuff. I'm going to throw the car into my individual profile, which isn't hardcore Sport Plus. It's actually everything in comfort mode, but then the suspension aired out slammed which i think looks great let's take a look at the first charging stop that it wants us to have to go to 32 percent that's lame i say we just get on the road and get moving i'm not sure which direction it's thinking about taking us i was thinking we would do the opposite of how we got down here yeah so i think we'll listen to the car now because we went through nuremberg or just about so we came 
up this way and over, and now we'll go down to Stuttgart and over at nighttime, there shouldn't be much traffic. So let's throw it in reverse. Oh, actually, before we do that, let's reset our trip calculations. Neutral, park, go away, shifter screen. Thank you. Since charging, let's do a total trip since we haven't done this yet. Whoops, gotta go reset, then total trip. Boom. In reverse, let's hammer down. Same thing applies. We drive as fast as possible because we can always charge faster than we can drive in the Taycan. Nice Zoe charging up. It's a CCS Zoe, nice. Some of those are just uh, AC charging only. And you can get the early ones up to 40 plus kilowatt AC charging. But uh, yeah, let's head out of this awesome charging park. Really have fallen in love with this place. I think things like this in the US would do really well. They actually do have a windshield washing station and an air pressure tire fill up. There's a Model S taxi charging. How about that? Super cool. And uh, yep, just pulling out of here now. Wow, this is insane. Those are the battery storage in the back, two megawatt hours of storage. I think what I need to do to clear this is raise the suspension actually. So we're just going up to clear this hump. There we go, nice, no scrapage. We never wanna scrape a car. And now we can lower ourselves back down. Okay, hammer time. Again, I was explaining, you can drive as fast as you want in the Taycan, it, unless you're, you're doing real top, top speed stuff, which is pretty hard to do. At nighttime, it's not. Basically, we'll take our advantage, drive as fast as we can, and I enjoy charging fast and taking a look at temperature stuff, so we'll just drive as quickly as conditions allow. It had a Golf R badge on the front, but it's very clearly not a Golf R. Okay, might just be an R line. Let's hit the road. Welcome to an Eon station. I believe these are only 175 kilowatts, but it was actually right near a little highway rest stop, which is where I was feeling like, okay, nice little snack at that last stop, but pretty hungry. Car is at, I wanna say 10% or so. These are pretty short cables, so we'll see if we can squeeze it in or I'll have to park the car a little bit weird, um, but we're stopping for an experiment. So let me see if I can squeeze this plug in and we'll get this thing charging. Okay, I got the plug in. I don't believe these do plug and charge. So let's say start for CCS and then we'll tap our charging card. There we go. So Eon ABB chargers, I think 175 kilowatts. Here's what we're trying. The battery's in the red. We were basically in turtle mode. I was ripping it as hard as I could, about 1.5 miles per kilowatt hour. Um, I do like how you can put it in miles per kilowatt hour, even though the car's in 
um, kilometers per hour. So nice adjustability there. If you remember what I was saying about battery saving fast charging, you remember that above a certain temperature range when it's really hot, it doesn't allow fast charging and it caps at 170 kilowatts or so, uh, 200 kilowatts. But here we're doing 173 kilowatts, even in battery saving fast charging, at 51 degrees C. So it's like, hey, no matter what, we're going to charge this thing. Again, don't forget the Sport Plus trick. Let's see what happens when I uncheck this one. Maybe it'll just not change because that's about the most that the charger can output. Yep, so <laughs> I guess it's fine. It's just like, yep, we'll give it the juice if we can. Anyway, I'm just gonna let it charge up for whatever it wants. Interior cooling deactivated in Sport Plus mode whenever the battery's above 50 degrees Celsius, I think. That's when it kicked on while driving, when it got to 50 degrees C. Again, really just you know hard on the car for long distances. Certainly can overheat any electric car. This has some of the best thermal longevity of any EV, but everything has their limits. There's our stats. Pretty nice open runs this evening, I have to say. No one's really going too fast. I hadn't been going crazy. At nighttime, you don't want to, you have to watch for animals. And this car has night vision, which is really helpful. So it actually highlights deer and humans and whatever else it finds in the dash, which is a really good idea. So what I'm going to do basically is just run inside, get some food. And then whenever I'm done, we'll just continue to hit the road. But ABC, as Bjorn says, always be charging, right? So we'll keep this thing juicing up whenever we're not moving. I'm inside and unfortunately everything seems to be closed. They just got some schnitzel and sausages laying there, but no one to be found. <laughs> well, just finished checking some emails. We're at 56% state of charge. We've tapered down big time and I think mostly, hmm, probably due to temperature. Could be turtle mode, could be trying to cool itself. Oh, I have it in normal, whoops. I thought I had it in Sport Plus. Maybe when I got back in, it didn't remember. Obviously it didn't, dumb Kyle. So what I think we're going to do is follow the trip planner. I just put in where we have to go. Now you can hear the fans kicking on. My fault for the slow charging, whoops. Always Sport Plus, if you have the car on. If you have the car off, it does a pretty good job. 7% arrival, that gives me a little bit extra to burn, but again, we're not gonna go crazy fast at night. Sometimes just, you know, wanna be a little bit safer there. And it's bringing us to an Ionity station right off the highway and uh, let's do it. So to unplug, a lot of van lifers here, everyone's sleeping in their vans in Germany. It's a big, big thing and I kind of like it. I, you know, I have a van, I love, I love van life. Would be nice just to park and sleep for a few hours, but hey, could at a hotel. But uh, yeah, we got 41 kilowatt hours in 16 minutes, uh, even at low power charging, I would say, at 170 kilowatt charging and the things in the red. So let's just take a nice, gentle, brisk cruise down the road as that charging port closes for us in the Taycan Turbo Sport Turismo. to the Ionity station, 3% state of charge, just sort of had the plan, right? Like we had mentioned, put in that charging station and then just drive as quickly as we could, but still making it here, just cruising between, I'd say 160 and 200 kilometers per hour cruising speed. Occasionally, I opened the charge port from inside the car, didn't drive with it open. Occasionally popping up, whoa, big spin, gotta plug it in. 
um, popping it up to 240, 250 kph once in a while. But then once I was getting closer, I was just, you know, managing our charge level, cruising at 180, 190, something like that. Really just a great late night cruiser. It's cooler outside. The, you can tell the battery pack is staying much colder and colder temperatures out here. And um, yeah, much less traffic. This thing can really cover some distance. It's pretty impressive. So it looks like plug and charge went as well. It even says plug and charge communication pretty cool loving this and then of course just german rest stops get completely full at night and we're just outside of frankfurt well not too far but i should say not just outside we are not too far and i got this thing slammed in low suspension looks amazing look at the size of those carbon ceramics the calipers are huge they're honestly awesome i've just been standing on the brake pedal when needed it flashes the brake lights from time to time i don't really like flying up on cars from behind it's a little bit rude it's also illegal and so sometimes i brake a little bit early and hit the brakes a little bit harder than needed and it's just fun especially at night to watch the uh the tail lights flash i can see the reflection in the signs behind ramping up here three percent state of charge already over 200 kilowatts 230 kilowatts right there damn this thing is awesome i got a red bull in the car i'm feeling great we're just gonna keep hammering down i think one more charge stop and we're back uh, i think we'll do a pretty deep charge here actually is what the car was asking for and then i'll charge up one last time before i get back to my friend's house you see uh, they don't have charging there and they're kind of in the middle of nowhere near lake constance so i just need to yep juice up at the last available high power charger on the way. You join me just about halfway through the charging session or so for about what we're gonna do. You can see the car is not charging at its maximum. Normally we'd be around 340, 343 amps peak, doing a maybe 265 kilowatts around this, doing 252 right now. And uh, not totally sure why, could be infrastructure, could be the car, you know, maybe actually not being warm enough in this case because I was pretty gentle on it and it's getting chilly outside. Doesn't matter either way, 253 kilowatts, who's to complain? Uh, yeah, just sort of thinking a little bit here about my drive today, have covered a lot of distance and you know, for me, I think I'm gonna make a video on out of spec reviews. It's not about the range, it's all about the charging, especially here in Germany when you don't have speed limits, especially at night, you can kind of just rip the best thing to do is just to hammer this thing, you know, not and maybe not max speed, but again, doing what we're doing, cruising around 180, 200, 210, and then plugging in and charging up very quickly. And it's all about the charging. So that's gonna be the title of the video. It's all about the charging, not about the range. And this is just the proof of that. I can't wait till my Tycon comes in. I've really, it's become a useful tool, let alone, yeah, I love the car, it's really fast, looks great, hauls ass, all the good stuff. It's actually like one of the only cars on the market that allows me to do my job better because I had to drive across the country, film a video for an hour and get back today and really nothing else can do that except this car here. I mean, maybe a Plaid, but they're not on sale in Europe at least. And definitely not a P100D or anything. It would have major overheat. Model 3 performance can't charge as fast. Doesn't have as much energy capacity, but still might be able to keep close. I really need to do a long distance run here in Germany between this and a Tesla, because this these are the only options really. There's nothing else. Ionic 5, great car, great charging, just doesn't have the high speed stability, acceleration or anything that I would want here. I mean, it's really just between this and a Plaid, if I'm honest. And I own a Plaid at home and we can't drive like this in America. So hard to say until we can get them side by side here in Germany. Looks like we're tapering off down to 220 kilowatts at 50%. Yeah. I mean, I'll look to see if there's another Ionity along the way that we can just pop in and kind of run one of these sessions at. So I'll pop in and do some planning in a second. But, um, wow, I'm only about halfway through this Red Bull and <laughs> the car's, car's halfway through its charge. Looks like a BMW iX is just rolling up here next to me. Pretty sweet on the aero wheels. And um, yeah, so I just plugged in the charging planning. It's always good to charging plan in Sport Plus. A for cooling. Yeah, it did overheat a little bit. I think that's why we're charging slower. Um, a for cooling and B, 
Let's see what it wants to do. Ian Bivet, 300 kilowatts, 17% arrival. Yeah, putting in Sport Plus kind of gives it worst case scenario. We're at 60%. Let's unplug and head to that station. I like that plan. Plus, we've been using too much Ionity today, I think. Yeah, nice typical German man driving an IX on the aero wheels. That's a 40, nice. I just spoke to the IX owner for a little bit and uh, he was asking about the Taycan. I was asking about his car. His is the 40 and he said it was $25,000 or euros because it's the same. More, by the way, everyone in Germany speaks English, which is great. Um, so, you know, why do I need to learn German if I'm gonna be living here for a few months out of the year? I don't know. Um, but he was so cool. He's like, it's not worth 25 grand for more range, but uh, I'll just spend an extra five minutes at the charger, but he'd really like more range. So it sounds like the 50 is the sweet spot. I'm actually flying back to the to the US here in a couple days, and I'm picking up an IX M60, I think. At least that's what it said on the build sheet when I got it, an M60. I hope they sent me the right one, because that'll be pretty spicy. Okay, here we go, big power. We got some juice to burn. <laughs> over at the Ian Bivet stations over here. Alpitronic, love these things. Let's take a look at our trip, actually. We haven't looked at efficiency in the last little bit. So far, 1.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Let's take a look at since charging. 1.7, man, and good, good average speed. A lot of construction, a lot of low speed zones. And when it was opened up, yeah, just cruising. This time, maybe around 220 kph. A couple times hit the top speed limiter, why not? You're only in Germany for sometimes, or I should say maybe the speed limit's going away sooner. I don't believe ENV they has a uh, plug and charge, but let's find out. I've never actually tried it. No, the car has it. So in we go. It's just gone blue. And uh, while I search for my charging card, we'll let this see if it communicates. So I don't believe it does plug and charge. I just tapped my card and yep, had to hit this one. So there we go, just juicing up now. And uh, man, I love these units so much. They're just so freaking awesome. They do power share. So I did choose the other unit from this car so that we make sure we get all the juice. And again, we're getting gonna get just enough to get to the last station before we get back to where we started. I love the ENBW stations, ENB Bay in German that give you the charging curve as we go. Basically it's doing a solid amp request and then pulling up our average charging power of this session is 250 kilowatts so far, just amazing. We're doing 265 kilowatts at the moment. And um, I mean, the thing is just absolutely shredding. How about that? Now we're pulling off at 47%, which makes sense. It does taper at 50%. So I had to make a quick phone call and seven minutes later, we're pretty much good to go. I'm gonna take a look at the last station and then we're gonna hammer it over there. So this right here is going to be our last charging spot. It says there's 10 chargers at this. Are you kidding me? That's pretty crazy. So Ian Bivet, 300 kilowatt, replace destination. Let's just put it in as that's where we wanna go. It says 7% arrival. That's looking pretty damn good to me, I have to say. Let's take a look at all of our stats here. We are information at 
nice and toasty. So ripping it's gonna be the challenge here because now we gotta manage temps. We're down to 187 kilowatts though. We really gotta rock and roll and go. We got an 8% arrival. I can just drive a little bit slower. And then from there I can head down to Lake Constance and I have plenty of driving around. And they have some HPCs you can see in this area, but not directly along the route. So this is the last high, high power station. There's one 150 kilowatt unit that I can hit, but this is a Tycon. We don't wanna charge it 150 kilowatts. We wanna charge it 250 plus. All right, hitting the unlock button, charging is stopping. 10 minute charging session back on the road. It's insane, insane. I'm just loving the infrastructure here, loving the car. Tycon and Germany are like a match made in heaven. It's really astonishingly good, it really is. It shows how far behind we are in America. Let's go. Actually, I ripped it a little bit too hard and we made it to an Ionity station, which is like one exit up from the ENB Bay we originally planned on. Not a big deal, but um, yeah, plug and charge, Tesla superchargers over here. I've been here actually in a combustion vehicle just recently. I, um, yeah, I guess I can explain that in a second because I do think it's important to talk about the efficiency of gas versus electric at high speeds. Ooh, everything is nice and chilly. The car is getting toasty from driving hard there towards the end. And in we go, plug and charge, another Ionity station. I feel like there's a lot more Ionity stations than I remember there being in last year's road trip. Really just so impressed with the network. At literally every exit, 300 plus kilowatt charging, doesn't matter. <laughs> you just go as fast as you want, plug in and charge. Um, my goodness, this car looks amazing. I just can't stop looking at it. It's so good. And these stick out a little bit. Yeah, that's how it should be. There we go. Cable cooling's on, ramping up. And uh, let's see this light turn green. Come on, plug and charge. There we go. Clicks are happening. Haven't even looked at the screen. Let's see what it says. And it says something about... Don't really know thinking about payment I guess is what that sign says I can put this to English it says preparing to charge great it's all we need <laughs> I love it 
and there we go, charging. Cars in Sport Plus, ramping up quickly, 100 plus kilowatts. 150, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 230, that's what we're looking for. And you can even hit this little details button and get all the, the nerd stuff that we like to see. Man, this is the best way to road trip a Taycan. So just recently, I actually had some issues with a flight and blasted through here in a combustion vehicle in a Cupra, a really spicy one, actually. It had the Golf R engine. It ripped, just pegged it the whole way from Frankfurt. Same route that we're taking. Actually, no, I took the same route that we went up this morning on the way down here and just basically had my foot welded to the floor the whole time. It um, was a lot faster than an electric car in the sense that I didn't have to stop nearly as much for fuel. And when I did, you know, fuel goes the same speed all the way from zero to a hundred. There's no tapering. So I'm able to use the full tank range of that. However, I was only getting about 200 kilometers to a tank, which is 120 miles or so. And that's just the nature of efficiency when you drive fast. Now the car itself will do close to that at normal cruising speeds, 210 kilometers per hour. I bet you could get 120 miles out of this car, something like that. But um, the problem is recharging it. You can't go back to full very quickly. You can go back to 50% really quickly in this car and 70% semi quickly but anything above 70 percent takes a long time in any electric car but of course the Taycan limits uh you know at 80 percent you just hit that ledge and so at least for now um you know gas is still king for road tripping speed and of course you don't have to stop nearly as often but for fun uh it's really fun to manage the high speed with the charging rate uh of the car and to pull in as low as possible and really huge props to the Taycan's trip planner and its range estimator upon arrival. It factors elevation, everything you could ever want. It's just so freaking perfect at getting you there. Oh, someone just went by on the Autobahn, which sounded like, I don't know, 400 miles an hour. That was awesome. And <laughs> people are just shredding out there. Um, yep. So big props to the software in this car to just really, I can laser get us here at the perfect state of charge every time without fail. And I have to say it's really down to their, their mapping and their charge planning and a really solid BMS. This is hard for an electric car to stay at wide open throttle down to low percentages and then get charged up and never really stop moving. Taycan's just built for it. So I'm going to do a pretty deep charge here. We just tapered at 47% from 265 kilowatts to 245 kilowatts. Whoa, big taper. And uh, really liking this little charge indicator on the charger. It goes up the higher you go. Also, I think there must be a little sensor for when you pull up because every time I've rolled up to one of these today, this little bar flashes. So I think it knows when you're in close proximity. Pretty smart. And... Um, also, I think Taycan may have gotten rid of the 270 kilowatt peak. It might now charge at 265 kilowatt peak uh, into the battery and 270 into the port. Maybe it's always been that way, but this is at least how I'm seeing it. Maybe it's overheating, I don't know, because it just went into turtle mode. I need to do more charge testing. Either way, we're picking at straws here. Things are charging monster, like it's just awesome. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a deep charge here, maybe to 80%, something like that, another 30%, and then uh, head down towards uh, Ravensburg, and uh, that'll be a day. It's 1.30 in the morning, but uh, wow, been an awesome drive. So we are all charged up to 81%. That should leave me with about 35% upon arrival, and that's in Sport Plus, kind of driving a bit like a maniac, so that is pretty good. Um, Yep, basically, I don't want to let the car sit too low. I also don't want to let it sit full. It just needs to be in a nice state of charge for tomorrow. When the charge port light comes on, you can see it at night. That means that the latch is open. But in the daytime, you can't see this so easily. Man, Ionity, they had a rough start, right? Very buggy early on. And now, rock freaking solid. Everything. This whole trip, we haven't had one charging issue. Not one. The charging planner brought us to all the best chargers. I did a little bit of manual driving and you know what? It all just has worked. This is the experience we've all been looking for. So let's hammer down and sort of not drive too quickly because I need to let this thing sit overnight. 
with enough juice to make it back to a charging station in the morning. We are back from where we started. It is 2.21 a.m. So we pretty much shaved in an hour off of the original trip plan. Still at 37%. It's 2.19 like I mentioned. So time to go to bed.